on the June 2024 What's Neat. This month, George Bogotak shares with us part two on how he built roads and the peripheral scenery around the road. It was very popular in the month of May, part one, so now we continue on with part two. George. The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for June 2024. I'm your host, Ken Patterson. And this month, I'm looking at this beautiful Southern Pacific GS4 locomotive from Broadway Limited in HO scale. I photographed this model this week outside in between storms as we've been getting a lot of rain. And this model looks absolutely exquisite in outdoor sunlight. Just a beautiful model. Of course, it comes in a daylight paint scheme. You can check these out at the Broadway Limited website, Paragon 4 Sound and Smoke. It's a real treat to watch this beautiful model run. Also, be sure to make your purchases at Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois. They're absolutely fantastic guys to work with. Just a great crew up there. We met them last October, and it was an absolute joy. So with that, this month, George Bogotak shares with us part two on how he built roads and the peripheral scenery around the road. It was very popular in the month of May, part one, so now we continue on with part two. George, thank you very much for doing this segment for us for the show. Also this month, Matt Stern from Bachman Industries stops by on Skype and shares with us all the latest new products from him. And you can meet Matt Stern about three weeks after this show comes out at the RPM meet here in St. Louis. Yes, Bachman Industries is setting up at that show, along with Joe Fugate from Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. He will also be at the RPM meet this year. It's just coming up and it's around the corner. Be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week video podcast that we shoot down here every Saturday night, keeping you updated on what's new in the hobby. And there's been a lot of new news breaking lately and a lot of great products. Also, our great podcast crew, just everything that goes with the fun of the weekly show that we produce. And so with that, let's continue on with the rest of this June 2024 What's Neat. Okay guys, George here, and in this segment of What's Neat, we're gonna do part two of how I do my roads. Now, last segment, if you remember, we did our roads using a lightweight spackle and painting the road, or painting the spackle, and then just laying it down. And then once we're done, we sand it off. Now, in the last episode, I actually went and added these roads over here. Now, if any of you guys watched it, you'll notice there's been a lot of changes around since here, but that's okay. The road is still here. Now we haven't striped any of this yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and stripe the road and get it ready. And this is where houses are and the holes are for wires for lighting, um, things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and get the roads ready. Now, when it comes to doing our roads, we wanna go back and look at the prototype. And so what does the prototype do when it has to stripe the roads? Well, the road maintain maintenance crews actually paint the stripes on the road themselves. They actually have a specialized machine. Now, granted, this is a lot thicker paint because it has to endure the constant beat of tires and hot tires and, and stuff like that on the road, plus the sun and, and weather and everything else like that. But 
when we're doing the roads here, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the stripes. Now you can see here in this particular section, all of these road stripes are actually painted on. Um, no stickers or decals or anything like that. And part of the reason I don't like using stickers and decals is because in our model, they can tend to kind of look that way. The other thing is stickers can peel up or decals can cause that film to show on the road, making it very evident that it's not really painted on. And so this is a quick and simple task that you can do to simply paint your roads. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera, get you guys a closer look, and I'm gonna show you how quick and easy this is. The biggest chore of this particular part of doing the roads is actually the prep and cleanup. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna move the camera. I'll be right back. Okay, so now that our camera's been repositioned, we're gonna go ahead and leave it here. But if you look here, you can kind of see where uh, I ended the stripes. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna continue the white stripes up into the neighborhood. Um, the yellow stripe typically wouldn't, but we're gonna go ahead and change that to a, a white stripe, a, a white uh, dotted stripe or split stripe. Now, when you're doing your roads, you want to look at what your local municipalities do. Uh, and, you know, always, you always use those as the prototype because they're going to be a lot more accurate in doing the, the work. So anyway, we're just going to take some simple masking tape. Now, this is just some simple masking tape you can get at your local hobby store. But because it's thin, it means it's flexible and easy to move around. So we're simply going to match up where our stripe is on this other one just like that. I'm gonna show you, get you in here a little bit easier. So you can see I've kind of matched it up. Now what we're gonna do, now I'm just gonna take this road stripe and just kind of go up the way where I want it. Whoops, came up on me. And in cases like this, it may not be a terrible idea to, uh, Put some tape down to help hold it and since we're going to be painting this i don't want to cover over the work that's already done so i'm going to start with using a big piece of blue cup blue painters tape and that'll help hold that in place and then you just want to press down and make sure it's going to go where you want it to go and don't worry about imperfections again we can fix them if needed but we're just going to go up the road here just like this And remember, you want to be kind of close to the edge. Now, this tape's peeling up a little bit more than I want it to because of this curve right here. So, I'm gonna put this set piece down where it broke. You don't need to pull this tape tight. Remember, it's just gonna tack it down. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over on that and I'm just gonna use the thicker masking tape that you can get at the hardware store or whatever. And we're just going to kind of reinforce this. And if you're having a problem like this one right here where it's sticking up a little more, don't be afraid to put another piece of tape over it and just kind of try to help hold it down. The biggest thing, I mean, you can do all of this with the thicker blue tape if you like. Um, I find that the thinner tape is easier to man maneuver around, and then we can use the bigger tape to kind of mask off the edges. Um, and it'll form as well, but let the other tape do the primary work. Be the main tape. And again, we're just like I said, just trying to shooting off the side. Now, when we use our airbrush, our airbrush is going to be fairly focused, so we don't necessarily need to worry too much about masking way beyond. Um, if you're really worried about it, you can always get the, oh, that piece just got ruined. If you're worried about the sides, you can always, you know, put another bigger piece along the edge here. It's just entirely up to you. So this is the biggest challenge right here, is just putting the tape and making sure that you lay your stripe. You can see it goes fairly quickly. And we're gonna do the same thing on the inside here. We're gonna tape 
the inside of the stripe. Now, this is where you want to be careful. You want to make sure that you have a similar size uh, distance all the way through. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So now you can kind of see how that road stripe is starting to take fit take shape now this is coming up a lot this is annoying me I may relay this uh, off camera but you can kind of see how that stripe is and then we'll do the same thing just like we did a minute ago so I'm actually going to realign this piece here a little bit better there we go and then we're just gonna work our way through and then we're going to stripe all this out. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a lot of this off camera in an effort to make this segment a little shorter. But you can kind of get a feel for what we're doing here. And don't worry if the stripe isn't perfect. The real ones aren't always either. So you don't always have to worry about making sure your stripe is exactly perfect. But take your time and work your way through it. And you can kind of see how quickly. Oops, let's put this over there like that. There we go. And you can work slow, you can work fast. It's entirely up to you. Work at your own pace. But there we go. Now we have, you can kind of see now how we have the stripes starting to take shape. So again, I'm going to come in here finish this up. I'm going to touch these pieces up here a little bit, make sure they're adhering well so we can get a nice clean even stripe all the way through. And then, uh, and then yeah, well, I'll show you the next step, which is the actual painting itself. So for that segment, I'll be back. Now I'm going to show you the progress. You can kind of see how things are taking progress here. And again, we're just simply laying our tape down. And just kind of going around the curves here as much as we can. Now, as this thicker tape starts to bow up, you can kind of cut it out and allow it to make this curve because it's the inside curve. On this side, it's the outside, so it doesn't matter. But this way, you can get it to stay and adhere better to the tape. But we're going to come up and cover all of this anyway. But you can kind of see how this is taking shape. And then you just work your way up through and then we're going to do the same thing down the middle. We're going to put our stripe down the middle and then we're going to use our tape to draw it off. Now this is where if you've planned properly and you have your proper lane widths, you shouldn't worry too much about making sure that your cars uh, have enough driving room. Uh, one of the biggest things that we do as model railroaders, because cars and roads aren't necessarily railroad, so we tend to make them as small as possible. And so, but that's one of the ways that our, makes our roads look more realistic is when they are the proper size. So again, pay attention to this. We talked about this when you were laying your road. Now, when you're laying your lanes, you wanna make sure that the lanes are approximately where you want them, uh, anywhere from eight to 10 feet. Um, and even some cases up to 12 feet again, depending on the size of the road. So this is just a small little um, uh, housing industrial or housing community up here. So um, the roads are gonna be a little narrower because typically you're gonna be driving a little bit slower. So anyway, I'm gonna keep working on this, but I just wanted to give you the information and go from there. Okay, so I've been at this for about 15 minutes or so, and you can kind of see how the shape of the road and the stripes are coming out. Now I just used the regular one inch tape to make these stripes and just kept these stripes about an inch apart. Maybe a little longer than what's prototypical, but the idea of what we're going for here is obviously the look of it, not necessarily the absolute, uh, has to be the absolute best prototypical. Um, if you wanna do that, then great, measure it out and see what you got. But let's take a look here a little closer and you can kind of see how the road is, you know, how the stripes are formed. Now we're simply gonna take our airbrush and Turn it on. So we're going to go ahead and fire it up. So the paint I'm using here today is this True Color paint, just a flat white. Um, I actually like the True Color just because it kind of reminds me more of the old Floquals. Um, this uses acetone as a, as a thinner, um, 
And so it kind of helps me get a little bit better of a flow in my opinion. Um, take it for what it's worth. That's what I like, but you can use your favorite particular type of uh, paint. Now I'm gonna turn on my airbrush uh, spray booth over here, just so I have somewhere to spray the excess. And I'm just gonna put a little bit in the cup because I can always add more later. Uh, but the reason is, is because we're gonna be working over the work. And so we don't wanna spill a whole bunch of white paint all over the place. Ideally, um, it won't get through because of this, but we don't wanna do it if we can get away with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my compressor. And we're going to test the flow here to make sure, whoa, that's a lot coming out. Okay, there we go. And remember, you don't need a whole lot. So we're just going to simply come over here and just go over the stripe. Now hopefully you can see what I'm doing here but we're just going over it. Now, if you wanted to do more of a faded road, you can just, you know, go over it once or twice and that'll give you a more faded stripe. But if you wanted to do a fairly newer striped road, um, then you can go over it multiple times. Now, in this particular case, this neighborhood, the way I'm building this layout is that the neighborhood has been an existing neighborhood and then the urban sprawl, as you will, came from here out and they extended the neighborhood road out to meet the new buildings. So this will be a little bit more of a faded stripe. But you see, it doesn't take very long to do. And with the right airbrush and the right settings, I'm using a Badger uh, 200, what is this, a 200 NH. Um, I like it a lot. Um, it's done really well for me. And you can see how we're not really spraying over the lines too much. So it's not like we're having a whole lot of overspray that we have to worry about going on to the, uh, onto the layout and all the various things around it quite as much. So I'm trying to untangle my cord here, or my hose, so I can reach back into the back without kinking my hose, but it's fighting me for whatever reason. Okay, here we go. Now we can reach back here. You can see this doesn't really take very long to do. We're literally just painting the stripes and the tape is making sure the paint's not going where we don't want it. So this way we get our road stripes, we get this dotted line through the middle. And you can always add more to it. You can always go back over it if you like, or if you feel like you need to. Again, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you don't like it, you can always sand it off and do it again. That's one of the best parts about this particular method that I like, is it's easy to modify and adjust and it feels more road stripe. It feels more like a road stripe and less like a decal or a sticker. I'm gonna touch up these ones up here. And I believe
there you go. And we're done. And you can see how quick that was. You can see there's not much overspray, so you don't need to mask off a whole lot. And then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna clean off my airbrush right now, and then we'll come back and peel the stripes off and or the tape off and take a look and see what it looks like. So I'll be right back. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. And so now we're just simply going to peel the tape up. And it may pull up some of the grass. I'm not worried about it. I'll go back and fix it. There you go. There's your striped road. You can see you can see how nice and even it looks and nice and clean and the lines are straight. Um, they're thin, but now they're painted on so we don't have to worry about a decal up or anything else. All this paint is just there ready to go. Now the next step, what we're going to do is we're actually going to weather this. We're going to show some tire wear and so forth on the layout uh, on this particular road, especially because it's the older one. Uh, these are all patches and things like that over the years that have happened that you can easily see. So again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our airbrush, and now one of my favorite colors to use uh, over the years was what was Flocal's Weathered Black. And I haven't really been able to find a equivalent, and so I kinda have this mix with some black, some l and gray, and some, uh, um, uh, what it was, the uh, Harbor Mist Gray, and kinda mix it up. It's my own concoction, but it's pretty close. It gives me that nice dark gray black that I like. Now, when I'm putting this in the airbrush, I usually like to do this about a two to one um, mixture, uh, maybe a three to one where it's three parts acetone, one part uh, paint, because then I can always build up the layers as opposed to trying to put it all on on one coat. So again, I'm gonna take my airbrush over here and I'm gonna take some of this out Okay, so I've got my paint mixed up the way I want it to. So I've got a nice thin mixture and I'm gonna put some in the cup. And again, you don't wanna to put too much in the cup because, well, we're gonna be working over the work. And then here, it's gonna be a lot more evident that there are uh, paint streaks or drops over the over the end here. So I'm going to turn on my spray booth again so I can be ready to clean. And then I'm going to turn on my compressor. And then now I'm just going to kind of come in here. Now I'm going to start over here where there's not much going on. I'm trying to get an idea of how much paint's coming out. And I actually think that might be a little too much. So I'm going to add a little bit more thinner to it. All right. Now we're going to test this again, coming out. There we go. Now that looks a little better. So now we can just simply come on down the middle of the road. Doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Because remember here we're simulating uh, tire wear and oil and grease. So especially when it comes over to this bump X section where it's going up, uh, we want to add a little bit extra to it. Because when the cars bottom out there, they tend to leave a little bit more oil and grease. So again, don't want to put too much paint in your cup. Here we go. So now we're going to go ahead and kind of There you go. And that's it. And you can kind of see now how that's starting to look like a weathered road. We're going to take you in a little closer, show you what it looks like. 
and that's all there is to it. So I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to clean off my airbrush, I'm going to put my buildings back, we're going to come take a final look at the road, so I'll be back. Okay, here's the finished product. Now you can kind of see how the road has been weathered and it really looks used. You've got the patching up, which is perfectly natural. You've got the road weathered and we've got our striping and everything's been painted and you can look and see how crisp and clean that is. And it just takes a few minutes and especially once now we have the buildings in place, it just helps fill the scene off and finishes it up. Now the last thing I'm gonna do and I'll show you this uh, is I'm gonna come along the side here with some uh, ballast. Uh, basically some dark, dark gray ballast kind of create a little bit of a shoulder along the road through the neighborhood and then we're going to plant some mailboxes and so forth so let me grab my materials and we'll be right back okay so for this section um, I'm just going to use some um, matte medium that you can get at the Walmart this thing is I think about 12 bucks or something like that and then I'm going to use this Arizona Rock and Mineral Northern Pacific gray um, I kind of like the mixture of it and so I'll spread it into or pour it into a bucket like this. Now what I'm going to simply do is I'm just going to come along the side of the road here where I want the ballast and just kind of paint the edge with some of the matte medium. And don't worry if it's not perfect, again this is just scenery. The only thing regular in nature is everything's irregular. So we can come in here and this rock will get everywhere too, being on the shoulder. So it's not something we're going to worry too much about. And you can kind of see, I'm just coming along the edge of the road here. And then we're going to stop about there. Do the same thing on this side. And the reason I'm putting this down first is it helps give some base bite. It helps hold the material to the ground. And then once we get in and start uh, putting everything in place, um, and once we're done with it, we're gonna cover it with a glue matte medium mixture. Again, this is just for drainage, just to kind of show um, finish the road off here a little bit. Whoops, a little too much on the road there. There we go. That's easy. And then we're just going to go very slow. So we're just going to grab little pinches at a time and just kind of come along the side of the road here and fill it in to what looks good to you. And usually I try to go about a quarter to an eighth of, or to a half an inch off the side of the road. And you're going to be doing this kind of just like you're ballasting your your uh, your tracks, just a little bit at a time. There we go. And like I said, it just adds a little bit of depth to what you're working with and gives it a finished look. Let's start on this side. So don't be afraid, you want to go all the way up to the side of the road because it is a drainage type uh, shoulder. And then not all of it's going to get into the glue. So don't worry too much about it. And then once we're done, we can just simply brush this off, brush what we don't want on the road, off of the road and off the driveways here.
and that's it. Now let's take a look. You can kind of see now how that road looks a little more finished. Um, and there'll be some touch-ups still. But then we can come over it with some um, thinned down matte medium. So first thing what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, water, what I call wet water. Um, this is uh, water with some rubbing alcohol spread mixed into it to help break the surface tension. And it's just a mixture. And I'm just going to kind of come over it like this, help make sure it adheres. And just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some mixed up and thin diluted matte medium, which I have here. I need to shake it up. And I've got, this is an old apple juice uh, jar, and there's marbles in the bottom to help mix it up. All right. Now we're going to take this, we're going to pour it into a bowl. In this case, this is a used Cool Whip uh, container. Oops. Then the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little pipette. And we're going to just drizzle it and the water with the uh, alcohol in it will draw it into the rock and actually glue it and don't worry if you get some of the glue on the on the road it won't matter and you kind of see how this is going here pretty straightforward pretty easy And that's it. This is all there is to it. Now we have a nice, uh, perfect neighborhood road that the neighborhood can be proud of. And there we go. So guys, that was as easy as it was. Now I'm gonna come back in a minute, let this dry for a day, and we'll come back and show you the finished work, uh, what the finished product looks like tomorrow. Okay, now it's the next day and we're gonna show you the finished results of the striping, adding the rocks on the side, a little bit of weathering and so forth, and now with some cars and even a few little mailboxes. So here's the finished results. You can kind of see the road looks good. It's got a little bit of wear and road uh, grime on the middle. We've got our stripes, we've got our road ballast on the side for drainage. And you can see that it's a nice finished clean look. So guys, this is how easy it is to make roads. Now the cool thing about this is that with this method, you can make roads to fit any place on your layout that you want or need. You're not confined to either prefabricated roads, pre-made curves or anything like that. With minimal effort, it's not very expensive to do. You can make realistic looking roads on your layout nice and easily. So guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. And that's this segment of What's Neat. For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Matt Stern from Bachman Industries out in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Hey, Matt. Hey, Ken. How are you doing? Fantastic. You're going to give us an update here in June of all the exciting things happening there. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I have a few product samples um, to show here. Um, right behind me here, if you'll see, um, I've got some locomotives and cars to talk about, but I also want to point out we've got some... Uh, box samples here from, for some stuff we've already talked about. And this is our uh, 44 tonners in HO scale. These are uh, 
our first box samples. And whenever we get box samples in, that means we're not too far away from our production models coming in. Nice. Um, by the time this comes out, this may very well be uh, heading to uh, retailers. But not guaranteed that it will be yet because you never know for sure. But um, we're definitely looking at a, uh, at a at an early summer arrival for these. Now, the packaging is cool in that you can see in the box. Yes. Yeah, we've got a nice big window here. This is actually new packaging. Um, so this is our standard packaging we're going with for... Uh, um, pretty much everything moving forward. I think we've talked a little bit about that before as well. Um, you might see some of our stuff arriving that's going to be in uh, some of our legacy packaging still as you know, we work through uh, what we have. But uh, this is this is our look moving forward, and we're, we're excited about it. It's nice. It's good. And uh, just for anybody who hasn't seen the uh, 44 tonners yet, um, very cool models. This is the first time we're offering them with uh, Tsunami 2 uh, soundtracks, DCC, and sound. Um, they're also going to be uh, in a couple of paint schemes that uh, haven't been done before. Like um, we're, we're offering uh, Amtrak, replicating their locomotive that runs uh, at the um, the Beach Grove shops in Indiana. Okay. Um, I have a sample of that here, but they're in the box. You can't see them too well. We've got Santa Fe um, in the uh, the zebra stripe scheme. We've got a painted on lettered black one um, because you know there's so many small railroads or even railroads that may not even exist that are only uh, industries on your layout that you might want to use one of these for. Okay. And uh, we've got uh, Baltimore, Ohio, and the uh, the beautiful midnight blue there as well. Amen. There you go. Hold up the Amtrak one, because that one looks cool to me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I love all the Amtrak stuff you guys are coming out with. I've got a bunch of it on the table here. That, yeah. that's nice. This is great news. I mean, just the sound. This is going to be fantastic. It is. And that, that, I've heard the startup sequence on these, and it's, it, it's, it's very cool. <laughs> so what else you got? Yeah, so um, so we've got a couple of new uh, new things to show off here in HO Scale. So uh, starting with locomotives, uh, we've done a little teaser on social media for these, but uh, just to show it up close for the first time, this is the uh, Leviathan 440. Beautiful. Very cool model. Very cool uh, red, black, and uh, wood paint scheme. Uh, now it's an interesting locomotive this one because this is a model of a replica. So it's actually a replica of a replica. Okay. Um, the uh, for, for anybody who may be unfamiliar with the prototype, uh, the Leviathan was a real four for row back in the 1800s, um, but it became, uh, but it was it was unfortunately one one of many that was lost to history um, and uh, was rebuilt entirely from scratch wow. by the uh, the Cloak Locomotive Works in uh, in the in the 2000s, and uh, it actually now runs uh, here in Pennsylvania at the uh, at the Star Barn. Um, in Lancaster County. I think I saw something on that. They were very thorough in the way they rebuilt that locomotive. They were, and it works exactly like the original. So it's a fully functioning 440. Um, wow. It's got, you know, everything on it works the way it would have on the original. Um, so our model um, can be used as a model for uh, either the original or the replica. So if you're modeling the 1800s, this model could work for the original, which in its own right was a, uh, was a, a, a notable locomotive itself because it actually uh, powered uh, one of the business trains that was heading to uh, Promontory for the uh, the meet uh, earlier in the journey. So it, while it wasn't one of the ones that was photographed at Promontory, it did play a part in the story. Nice. Um, and uh, then, of course, if you're modeling the modern era, uh, the replica is uh, a, a perfect addition to your roster for that. And one of the cool things about this is that when the uh, when the real replica was... Uh, was debuted. It toured the country and and and, and visited various uh, scenic railroads and railroad museums. So uh, you pretty much have an excuse to run it wherever your layout's based in the country. Okay. And this is going to come with uh, this is going to be a DCC ready mod model. Nice. So in rolling stock, we have a uh, something pretty modern here. This is our first uh, Trinity Hopper sample. This is an unpainted sample here. This is the 5161 Hopper, um, probably one of the most uh, popular modern hoppers that you'll see, uh, covered hoppers you'll see on the rails today. Right. Um, you'll see these pretty much anywhere in the country. Um, you know, they're famous for being in those long grain trains that BNSF runs um, through the Northwest and, uh, you know, through, through the, uh, the Heartland. Um, but you'll see these uh, with CSX, you'll see them with Norfolk Southern. Um, our model actually is going to be coming in BNSF, Norfolk Southern, uh, CSX, and then in uh, Canadian Pacific as well. Okay, and this is all new tooling. This is all new tooling here, yeah. The uh, only tooling that has been reused here is for the trucks. Very nice. And the roof locks look nice. 
Yeah, um, if I try, if I can get a good angle on them here, it may not show up in the uh, in the video, but uh, these are uh, see-through roof walks. Very nice. Um, you've got on this end here, you've got the separate brake wheel, separate brake rigging down here, all the piping, and the, and the cylinders and all that. Um, you've got underneath here, you've got the uh, you've got the chute hatches here, which are also separate parts. Nice. And uh, yeah, this is one of those cars that you could just see, uh, you know, a hundred or more of in a train just running for miles, um, pretty much anywhere in the country. So uh, if you're modeling modern America, this is uh, one of the cars you pretty much have to have. That's nice. Very good. That's really, it's exciting to see new stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're trying to introduce some more uh, 21st century uh, applicable uh, freight cars into our line. So we're really excited about that. Um, now for something much larger. Yes. Uh, I've got some uh, cars that actually just came in this week. These are first paint samples. Uh, these are our large scale, 129 scale tank cars. Oh, wow, okay, wow, okay. Yes, I remember that. That's a very beautiful, that's cool. That's a heavy car. Yes, yeah, these, these have some weight to them. Um, they're uh, based on a, uh, on a mid 20th century design. Um, these were uh, some of the last cars that were built with a riveted design uh, before they went to uh, uh, welded design tank cars. Nice, yes. Um, they have a good level of detail on them. You've got these uh, these nice strap details down here. Yeah, I was just looking actually at that. Actually, got a uh, an opening nice. compartment in there. Okay. So, if you want to fill it with something, even though you'll never see what's inside, you can fill it with something. Right. Um. And uh, yeah, we've got four paint schemes for these as well. Uh, or actually, I believe, do we have four? Yeah, we have four paint schemes here. Got Quaker State. Obviously, the last one was Shell. Um, this is Quaker State. We've got this really nice Texaco Silver. And oh, it's important to include our North Pole and Southern Christmas line. Nice. Okay. So we've got Mrs. Claus Traditional English Christmas Punch. And uh, one of the cool things to note about these cars is. Uh, they come with uh, not only the ear appropriate trucks, but they also come with metal wheels as well. No, that's great. That's durability, the hold up outside. And that's the point of a lot of the uh, outside market is durability. Absolutely, yeah. And these are gonna be coming, uh, like I said, these just arrived this week as samples, so we're not gonna be seeing the production models for a little while, but um, we're gonna still see them in 2024. That's fantastic. Okay, Matt, I've gotta make this special announcement. Because this is a June show, a lot of you are coming to St. Louis next month, that's in July, for the RPM meet that we're having over in Collinsville, Illinois. And Bachman, in fact, Matt, you are going to be here in St. Louis. So when you see Matt, tell him you saw him on the What's Needs show. You must <laughs> say that. <laughs> I think I'm looking so forward to having you in town. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. We, actually, all of us here at Bachman are looking forward to being part of the RPM for the first time. That's awesome. Welcome. Welcome. This is going to be a great thing. Plus, we usually have kind of an event here on Saturday nights, and we shoot a show Saturday night here. And I would love you to be on that show. I think we can make something happen. That's fantastic. So what else? I didn't mean to change throw you off. What? Oh, no, no, no. That's fine. That, that was an important announcement. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have in terms of new product. Um, I do have a couple of uh, reminders for products that are in stock now. Okay. Um, these are pretty big, and I know people have been excited about these. Yes. Um, our Siemens ALC42 chargers, uh, our HO scale models in the Amtrak Phase 7 scheme, which is the uh, the, the new corporate livery that Amtrak has. Okay. Uh, they are in stock now. They just arrived at the time of filming. They just arrived this week uh, at retailers. So uh, these are... Uh, in stock, but they're uh, they're going to be hot models, so they're oh, they're, yeah. uh, they're 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 sure to sell out pretty fast. Oh yeah, that's you noticed that one's not on this table. I will be placing my order as soon as I'm done with this. <laughs> I, I just brought mine home yesterday. It's sitting on my layout now. Okay, rock and roll. I've seen them in photographs, and they're beautiful. They are. I I, I love this new paint scheme, and uh, just like our previous run of these locomotives in the uh, in the phase six and the day one scheme, um, this comes with the uh, TCS Wow Sound built in. Um, it's got all the functionality that you would expect with the lighting. Um, the uh, it's got the corridor work lights on the you know on the um, on the interior corridors in here. It's got the uh, it's, it's got light number boards. It's got the headlights, marker lights, ditch lights that flash. 
um, and it's got the reverse headlights and marker lights as well. Very cool model. Um, and uh, yeah, I know this is gonna be a popular one, so make sure to check your retailer for stock. Um, another Amtrak model, actually. Yes. Um, yes. That's in stock now is our Amtrak Midwest Venture Car. I know yes. this is one that you've been excited about. Yes, it's right here. It, I pulled it off the layout. I actually was running it a little while ago. There you go, yeah. And yeah, I will please. tell you, uh, um, I'm sorry to walk over you. Um, I've got the Via one here, which is the same car, right? I... Same car with, with a few differences. Um, for, so Via Rail um, has a few design differences to the, to the Amtrak one, and we've uh, tried to tried to keep consistent with the, the differences between railroads. Okay. Um, one of the differences will be the uh, the Amtrak one has marker lights and uh, has uh, a little bit of a different configuration that the VRL run both internally and externally. Okay. Where I'm going with this is I tried the couplers that came in the box. Mm -hmm. So there's two couplers. You've got the HO scale that matches, you know, like a KD number five coupler. Okay. But, mm -hmm. but when you put these other couplers on that you guys have included in the package, um, they close couple the cars together, whereas the diaphragms, there's almost no gap between them. So that's the way to close couple these cars. It works. Exactly, yeah. I was impressed with that. In fact, that's why I was testing them today. I had done it two weeks ago, but I hadn't run it yet. And it works around the curves perfectly. That's great to hear. Yes. Yeah, so these cars, now these actually are, are uh, out of stock with us now. Um, these flew oh. in and flew out. Yes. Um, they've been immensely popular, so... Um, we can't, I can't say that we have them now, but make sure to check, check your retailer because they may still have stock. Fantastic. There will be more runs of those. He hasn't said it yet, but trust me. <laughs> I mean, come on, this is Amtrak now. This is what we see in the Midwest. Yes. And as you know, Ken, there are different Midwestern cars too. So who knows what the future holds? If they keep putting all these different paint jobs on it, it's like an Easter basket full of all the different color eggs. It's amazing. <laughs> what you can do now with 50 years of history, you could literally just model Amtrak, and that would be fun. Oh, absolutely, yeah. There's so many different paint schemes, so many variations in rolling stock and locomotives. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, and, and that's why there are a lot of people out there now who do just model Amtrak. This is fantastic. This is the best hobby in the world with some of the best people in it, like Matt Stern here, which you'll get to meet in July. Looking so, forward to it. All right. And so with that, Matt, that is this segment for What's Neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at Broadway-Limited.com. Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com. 